All right, good morning, or good afternoon rather. It's 1240, and uh, thank you for stopping by. If you're around the fringes, you want to come on in. This is going to be uh, an interesting little different presentation. Uh, I'm Dean Moylan from the Noble Company. I'm their national sales manager. Lynette Bloomberg is my lovely assistant, one of the owners of Noble Company. And this year, we decided to do something a little bit different. You know, a lot of the companies do uh, new product demos, and those are very helpful. We wanted to kind of expand what we were going to do, and so we came up with this concept of the seven deadly sins of waterproofing. Again, whether you're an architect, a contractor, or a distributor, I think you might find this information helpful to kind of qualify the information a little bit. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. They call it the Petri dish of waterproofing. Why is that? There's 150,000 plus hotel rooms, and I guarantee you every type of system has been tried, some work, some don't work so well, so I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of um, forensic consultants, waterproofing consultants, sometimes risk mitigation attorneys, but the point is a lot of the information that's just been assembled here has come from them and hopefully uh, you'll find it helpful in your daily practice. So without further ado, let's take a look at the first, first deadly sin, or the seventh deadly sin rather. What is it? Not doing the flood test. Let me tell you, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I travel uh, most weeks, sometimes I go out of the country, I go on projects, high profile projects, great GCs, great tile contractors, they don't want to do a flood test. Uh, for those of you who are having trouble sleeping at night and are really bored, I have, there actually is a protocol there is a multi-page description of what you need to do for a flood test. But know this, here's what doesn't work. Testing one out of every 10 showers doesn't work. Putting water just around the drain is not an acceptable flood test. Um, not doing a flood test at all is the worst sin uh, contained within this sin. Uh, if you do that as standard practice, know this, eventually it will come back to bite you. And when you have to pull up a fully installed shower because you didn't do a, a flood test, uh, it's going to be a very expensive process. Long story short, you want to put about two to two and a half inches of water into the area um, where you're flood testing. It's got to be there for 24 hours. I will share with you that I've heard the excuse, we don't have the time, this area is too big. I have seen 16,000 square foot areas, back of the house food prep kitchens that were successfully flood tested. And trust me, even with that large of a flood test, you want to find out if there's a leak before you install your ceramic tile or natural stone. So that's our seventh deadliest sin. Now moving on to the sixth deadliest sin, omitting slope to drain. Again, hard to believe that with all the information out in the marketplace now, this still happens on a routine basis. And it's kind of heartbreaking because I've been on projects where the tile installation was just was perfect. The waterproofing was done flawlessly. Unfortunately, it was done on a flat substrate the water couldn't migrate to the drains. Uh, you ended up having significant issues down the road because you didn't do uh, a slope to drain. Now, I know we've got some, some professionals out there in the audience. I have a level in my hand. If I'm tilting that level to get the adequate slope to drain, quarter inch per foot, can anyone tell me where should that bubble move to? How far should that bubble move to get to the correct slope? Anyone know? Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah. You're saying half? Okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, if, you, if you have a half, you'll have enough slope to drain. The general consensus seems to be a quarter, okay? We can arm wrestle over that difference later tonight, okay? But definitely you want to look at your, whatever size level you're using, if you at least get to the quarter bubble point, you're going to have enough slope to drain. Another simple test, uh, and a lot of uh, forensic consultants use this, if you have a ball bearing or a marble and you put it at the top of your shower pan, if it rolls down unimpeded into the drain area, you probably have adequate slope to drain. So just know that, um, and by the way, the Noble Company does 
produce a variety of tools to help you out uh, with. Oh, are we still going? Oh, let me get clip back on here a second. Can you hear it? No. No? Now? All right, okay. Minor technical difficulty. All right, so with all the newfangled ways of doing shower pans, and there are a lot of them, a loose laid mortar bed shower pan is still very popular across the US. Towards that end, we have a prefab slope to drain that will help you to address that concern in the field in a very efficient manner. Additionally, if you want a bonded membrane system, the Noble Company has a pre-bonded 40 mil thick CPE membrane that's been bonded to a pre-pitched surface. Again, if you can provide a pre-pitched and bonded membrane surface so you have that slope to drain. Okay, moving on to the next deadly sin, not using prefab corners and curbs. Again, I've been on projects, six months old, brand new hotel, wonderful job of waterproofing done except, and I'm going to tilt this up right here, hopefully without knocking my mic loose. This is the curb detail. Do you see these curb corners? That's these products right here, okay? When you do the waterproofing, regardless of whatever type of waterproofing it is, if you don't waterproof this detail where it meets the upturn, you're going to have a failure because once that shower door closes and the water starts running down the wall and the door, it's going to migrate to this area right here. And we purposely left this open to show you what happens. It migrates down to that cavity, eventually gets underneath the curb core, it swells, you have a failure. These simple curb corners, when used, prevent that from happening. In addition, inside corners, even though our company mandates and approves a cut and fold with our sealant. Oftentimes, architects contractors want an additional level of assurance. We make a prefab corner that goes in these areas to again, make sure you don't have a failure. The number one source of failure in most shower pans is the drain detail. Number two is the curb, okay? These are ways of making sure that doesn't happen. Okay, moving on to the next deadly sin. Mixing waterproofing products. Okay. We often see this. Sometimes it's contractor di driven, sometimes it's owner driven. But you'll have, for example, we'll have our 30 mil CPE membrane in the shower pan, the most critical area. And then on the walls, perhaps it's budget driven, perhaps it's just comfortability driven but they'll use another manufacturer's product in conjunction with ours. Or it doesn't matter who the manufacturers are, when you mix two different manufacturers in the same waterproofing matrix, you're inviting a problem because unless you've spoken to that manufacturer and you know your waterproofing product is going to work with their waterproofing product, if something does go wrong, there's going to be a huge liability. So you want to make sure if you go that route, then you check with the manufacturer. Um, in our case, we have a high performance CPE sheet membrane for use in shower pans. In addition, we have a more value driven wall membrane. If that's a concern of yours, if you're trying to address a budget issue, you can still get our sheet membrane performance using the same manufacturer, the same type of product, and avoid these potential uh, manufacturer warranty issues. All right, on to our third deadliest sin. Time after time in waterproofing situations, we, saw, we see a lot with shower walls, or we see a lot in steam rooms where, and this is my little, little mock-up example, I want you to pretend this is cement backer board. This is drywall, mud, and tape. You don't want drywall, mud, and tape in your waterproof wet area of your shower or anywhere, especially a steam room. 
But what do we see it time and time again, we communicate to the GCs, please don't have foreign substances on the bondable surface of the substrate because if you do, it's like anything else. If your tile and stone is bonding to dust, is bonding to drywall mud, is bonding to paint, whatever's on the floor, it's not going to be a very good bond. The same thing is true of our membrane. If you're bonding to drywall tape and mud, especially in a steam room ceiling environment, a steam room wall environment, you're asking for a lot of problems. In addition, if you're on a floor surface, uh, you think by now it would be common industry knowledge, but oftentimes, I was on a job recently in Northern California. These were high-end homes in the Bay Area. $1.1 million tract homes. And they're putting our membrane down, which we're very excited about because it's a great crack isolation membrane, but they weren't prepping the floor whatsoever. I mean, not even a wipe down, not a, not a foxtail broom, no scraping of any kind of construction debris. Please make sure you prep that surface if you want successful waterproofing uh, with our product. Okay, the next deadly sin, we're getting down to number two, disregarding product limitations. Um, there is no one product that's going to do it all for waterproofing, okay? That's why there's so many different manufacturers, so many different products on the marketplace. But you want to be aware, and let me show you, this is our little mock-up here. Pretend you're on a floor environment and you're waterproofing. And you have a saw cut joint, or a cold joint, or maybe just a significant expansion or shrinkage crack. Now, even though we're talking about waterproofing, if you look at most specs on an architect specs, uh, Division 9 spec, it'll say waterproofing and crack isolation. Why is that? Because your crack isolation performance is going to be tied into your waterproofing success. Based on ANSI A118.12, our sheet membranes, our CPE 30 mil sheet membranes, meet or exceed the high performance criteria. Why am I bringing that up? Because if you use another product, it may not meet that high performance criteria. And so if that's the case and you're going over saw cut joints or cold joints, and they're larger than 16th of an inch, because by the way, standard performance is only a 16th of an inch, you could have potential issues with your waterproofing down the, down the road. I'll tell you in Las Vegas, one of the most consistent, repeatable failure points I see is where the shower pan meets the wall. If you don't have a robust waterproof membrane at that detail, over time there's going to be movement and you're going to have a failure. Make sure you're aware of what your product can and cannot do to avoid waterproofing problems. In addition, permeation, let's talk about permeation. Uh, it's what happens on your walls. In a steam room environment, very critical, but also steam showers, uh, college dormitory showers, uh, almost any environment where you have lots of steam, it's going to migrate to the stud wall cavities. When you get to that area of waterproofing, there's a wide range of permeation performance differences. What does that mean? Permeation is the lower the permeation rate, the better your, your product is. The higher the permeation rate, the more it allows steam to migrate into your stud wall cavities. Let me show you a graphic example. Going back to our TS membrane, 30 mil, if you took a 1,000 square foot area and over the course of a week quantified how much steam could migrate in the form of water, we're looking at about three bottles worth, over a thousand square feet, okay? Relatively modest, but even still, that's what will migrate through your stud wall cavities. And by the way, we are the lowest, we have the lowest permeation rate of any membrane in the industry. Now, by comparison, if you're perhaps using a trowel applied system, a roll applied system, roller applied system, in some cases, over that same thousand square feet, this is how much water is going to get through in a week's time in the form of steam or vapor migration. Again, these are not facts numbers that the Noble Company came up with. They're common knowledge. If you'd like us to substantiate them afterwards, please let me know. Last but not least, the first deadly sin, and it's the mother of all sins, not reading the directions. 
not reading the instructions. May sound glaringly obvious, but let me tell you, it's amazing when I travel to job sites and we talk to installers and we're trying to identify, you know, what are best practices and how do we make sure there's not problems. The Noble Company actually ships instructions for all of our products with every roll that we ship to you, okay? So, if the roll gets to the field and it's unopened, the instructions are going to be right there. I think every manufacturer of every waterproofing product out there has the instructions on the side of their bucket uh, or on their website. And with smartphones and Wi-Fi, it's not too difficult to get the instructions and know how to install the products. But that is the first deadliest sin because when you don't follow the instructions, usually one of these things or multiple sins occur because you didn't do that. Um, that wraps up our presentation for the day. I appreciate your time. We are at booth 9088. If you have any questions, comments, uh, additional observations, stop by and uh, please let us know. We'd love to be able to talk to you and uh, explore those topics with you further. Thank you very much.